Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. All right, we are back. This is part two. Part two of planets and asteroids and the symbols, the glyphs, and meanings. I will try to uh, be good. <laughs> and when I say be good, I will try to get to, I'll leave, I'm going to try and leave all the extra stuff out. Um, oh, wow. We're having fun. We're changing things up. We're moving things around. What the hell? Which one do you guys like? Wow. Wow. <gasps> like, oh my God, what's going on? Um, this is strange because I just did this earlier. Oh, you know, maybe I didn't hit the save button. So you're going to do this with me. Me and the chat. I did do it. I updated it. You reached the limit of eight layouts. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. How about, oh, it's not going to let me delete that one. Okay. There we go. That works, right? Y'all good with that? I think so. Okay, so I'm not sure. Um, Cupid. Yeah, we left off on Cupid. And after that last video, I went and took care of the girls, you know, did all the food and stuff. And then, you know, called mom and, and did all that. And then I looked up Cupid because it wasn't showing up on the software here, which is very odd. Um, I don't know why it gets glitchy sometimes. I don't know if, yeah, I just don't know if they're like updating it or something. And so it doesn't read. So it's really odd, but I'm going to read it because this software said something different for its, because it's technically not Cupid. It's Cupido or Cupido, whatever, C-U-P-I-D-O. And that's the symbol on the screen right now. C-U-P-U. Um, I'm sorry, C-U-P-I-D-O. So let me read and see if it'll show up here. I'm going to do one little extra thing. And money, money, money. Yeah, C-U-P-I-D-O. And the definition. Will you give me the definition, please? Thank you. It represent the represents the arts and beauty, relationships, family, family history, marriage, and sociability, society, sociability. You know, your ability to, to socialize, to be within society, your ability to kind of, you know, I don't necessarily think a social light, but just, um, I use the example of uh, Miss Congeniality with Venus earlier. And so she was kind of, you know, social, you know, likes company, wants to talk and have conversation, wants things to be beautiful and pleasant. And um, yeah, social, likes to socialize, sociability. So that's what they say for this Cupido thing. And it's funny because I'm looking at it and I do see, right, you see Venus there. You see the head and then the body and the arms, right? Or the arms and then anyway. But then it's got like this Jupiter thing. So it's almost like a rocket not rocket. Yeah. Like a rock, not rocket, but I have hearing rock, rock star, like a rock star Venus. It's not just Venus who is, um, you know, just about the good things and the good food and the clothes and the hair. But this one is really more about being out there and socializing, but then understanding family and, and history. And she's, she's got a little more depth to her 
How about that? She's got a little bit more depth. We'll say that. See, Jupiter, right? What does Jupiter do? So this is almost Jupiter. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> One of my words going to get normal. God bless it. Uh, <laughs> you see, this is what happens when you have Jupiter on Mercury. Um, so what we have here is Jupiter expanding upon Venus's qualities. How about that? Makes sense. Jupiter is expanding upon G Venus's qualities. And what Jupiter does, naturally, Jupiter is more outgoing. Think of Sagittarius. Um, you could even say entertaining. Think of Pisces because Jupiter is the co-ruler of both, right? And so we think of Jupiter and Sag and the explorer, someone who is seeking, who's got this wisdom or who wants wisdom and who's willing to journey to get it right? And so that Sag energy has to be able to journey to places that it is, that's, it's unfamiliar territory. It's foreign to them. And so when you have that piece in there, you have to learn to, to be able to acclimate to different cultures, right? And so there is a piece of, 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 I don't know if you want to call it socializing, but there is that piece where you have to kind of like, honor the customs and you kind of, you know, cause you kind of want to immerse yourself in, in, in the engagement factor, right. In the physical engagement. And it's not the regular Venus because the regular Venus is like, Oh yeah. One-on-one -on -one baby, you know, husband and wife or whatever partner I should say. And then the other Venus, like the creature comforts and, and the money. Right. But this Venus seems she's a little bit more worldly because it's got like that Jupiter thing going on. Okay. So we'll see. Again, this is another one that I was kind of just drawn to start looking at. Uh, let's move on. Let me uh, move on, move on, move on. Taffy's not in the room. So I got my hand. We well, here we are with Pluto. This is not nothing new. You guys know about the, the glyph for Pluto. But Pluto can be seen in different ways, meaning there may be glyphs that don't look like this, right? If you were to look up on the ephemeris at astro.com, I'm trying to remember if they have the same glyph as this one. Sometimes you see Pluto written like as just the letter, like a capital P with like a foot at the bottom. I think they call that a, a serif. You know, like when you're doing text, anyway, I don't know all that stuff. My astrology or my housemate, she knows all that. She's all into fonts and text and stuff. And so it's either the sans serif or the serif, the one with the feet, the one with the feet at the bottom, right? And so it's like a big P with a foot at the bottom. And that's the other symbol I've seen for Pluto. And so, you know, about Pluto, the transformer, meaning it changes things. And so it does it at the root level. And so what happens is change comes and we die to our old way of being. Sometimes this can be a physical death. Many times it is kind of metaphorical. Um, an example, your life, the way it used to be. You see it changing and transforming before your very eyes, like the things you valued or where you lived or your job, like all that all of a sudden is just rapidly gone and changing. You're still alive, but everything else about your life is just, it's being changed and transformed. And so when that happens psychologically, we get, we start to question things and we're like observing and we're like, you know, it's, it's deeply psychological. That's Pluto. It goes at a really deep level. It's hidden stuff because it's those deep, intense emotions and possibly trauma. And that's all we're going to say about that for right now, because I could talk for 50 more years about that one, but we'll, we won't do that. So here we have Chericlo. Chericlo. Wife of Chiron. And so we need to know what Chiron means to understand what is wife. Yeah. What does that mean? Chiron is the wounded healer. The wounded healer. Chiron is the half horse, half human. And so Chericlo, the wife of Chiron, Chericlo's one 
who is basically being present while her husband, while her mate is injured, is wounded. And so she's there, she's present. And it also speaks to uh, non-judgmental love and kind of just understanding that you can't think. I mean, you can't think. You can think, but many times we will take things and and we kind of, whether it's a challenge to the reality, because it may be a challenge to a perceived reality of somebody else and what they're going through. So so real quick here, it says Chiron, wife, wife of Chiron, letting the mind, I'm sorry, not letting the mind be limited by the apparent reality, by questioning reality, choosing to open a door despite possible consequences and non-judgmental love. Okay. So that is Chericlo. And Chericlo is C-H-A-R-I-K-L-O. Chericlo. Okay. And let's move along. Look at that. We got another symbol right there. What in the heck is that? Right? What is that? I see an eight in there with like the bull's horns up on the top of the head. Right. And then like this spear, like a spear, like right down through the center. Like that's kind of a morbid way of looking at it. And um, because it's that big, honestly, I've never seen it like that before. But now that it's just like so big and bold and like in the face, I was just like, whoa, it just seemed very intense. So this would be this would be Hygieia, H-Y-E-I-A. That is Hygieia. And let me open up the software again because it's it's telling me it doesn't have any definitions. And I know it does, so bear with me here. I'm changing it for each one so I, I don't have to, I don't have a list. I do know that Hygieia is about health and it's not about bad health or good health. It's just simply the state of health of whatever sign it's in and whatever house it's in. So let me catch the meaning off of here real quick. It tells us, tells us of health issues. It ranges quite simply from our state of health to the lessons we do or don't learn from this state of health. Okay. All right. We are booking through here now. Oh, Saturn, right? Some of these are quite obvious, not a big deal. Saturn is that H with that cross through the top. You see that? Saturn's the H with that line through there. So you got this cross and it's like, wow, what? what's up with the cross? You know, you always see like, is there so much, I don't know. There's just a lot of different, different things. But Saturn, um, Saturn is rules and order time. Saturn rules time. Um, you can't take a shortcut when Saturn is involved. It wants you to learn the lessons thoroughly. So there's no skipping of steps. And that's why the time is required. I'm going to read from you from to you from the software. <laughs> Saturn represents responsibilities, boundaries, and structure. Structure that provides a positive framework within which you can build. Or structure that limits your development and forces you to reassess your liabilities and assets. And that's one of the things about Saturn I don't talk about enough is that those rules and, and the order and the organizing and the structure, it's all set in place because there is this long-term tangible goal from the get-go. It's based on long-term tangible security. So it's material and tangible, right? It's hard, Saturn, iron, hard. And the goal of having the order and the structure and the rules, the regulations, is so that things can function smoothly and to reach that goal, to, to reach it and to accomplish it. And then remember, you follow those rules, 
Saturn rewards. You get the recognition and the reward, but there is no shortcut. And if you take shortcuts, you get, think of Simon Says with Saturn, okay? If you try to take a shortcut, what happens in Simon Says, right? As soon as the person turns around and, or whatever, it's been so long since I played that game. Oh my God, I can't even remember how to play it. But the, it was something like, whoever was Simon would say, uh, take three steps backwards, Simon says. And then they would say another set of rules, right? They would tell you, they would tell you what you could do <laughs> and you could only do what they say. And then they would say, take two steps forward. And then somebody, maybe everybody would take two steps forward. And the trick was if the person who was Simon didn't say at the end of that order, Simon says, that meant you weren't listening carefully. It's all about it's all about being able to listen carefully and to follow directions is what that game teaches you, right? And so sometimes people try to take that two step forward. I can't remember. Do they then have to tag Simon? And that's why sometimes they would just kind of try to cheat and try to go forward before Simon could see them. Cause I think Simon's turned around anyway. You, you understand where I'm going with this, right? It's all about following rules. And if you don't go out, follow the rules, which if you got caught, if you got caught taking the two steps forward and then Simon turned around and saw that you took the two steps forward, but yet Simon didn't say Simon says you had to go back to the very beginning. You had to go back to the very beginning. And that is Saturn. It says, we're doing this the wrong way. We're not following along here. And, and so you got to start all over again. You got to go back to start. So that would be a quick definition for Saturn. Now, here is one that I, this is called part of fortune. It's a circle with an X in the chart. Okay. And for the longest time, I always wondered why bother showing this in the charts until one day it produced something. I saw it in my life, in my chart, it produced something. It, it, there was evidence, evidential astrology. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of truly how I started astrology. Like I tested it and said, if it doesn't prove I'm not, I'm not bothering with this because there's so much involved. It has to prove itself to me. And so that was kind of my angle. And finally, part of fortune did produce when it was angled in a beneficial way, I got money. There was something, whether it was money right at that moment or a client or just something, or maybe even a future communication that led to a client, you know, there was something where I was able to connect the dot back to part of fortune. So the, the software, the part of fortune represents your opportunities for spiritual integration. Therefore, it often points to how you experience joy, the joy that comes with union with the soul or higher self. Okay. So you tell me, do you follow part of fortune in your chart? Let me know how it showed up for you, how it has produced, how, what's the evidence that it's worth following? If you have followed it, let us know. Next, we have Nessa. Nessa. So this is kind of a new one. Um, this was not a recommendation from somebody on the channel. This was one that I was strongly guided to keep an eye on. And I thought, okay. And the funny thing was when I pulled it up in my chart, right? Cause that's how I do it. I never just throw it up in front of you guys. I always use myself as the experiment, right? And I put it in there and boy, it blew my mind away where it was located in my chart. It was at a very, very significant point to the degree where I remembered events in my life at that degree. Remember dates and degrees, they're one and the same, but I could remember the experiences. I could remember thoughts that I had because my Nessa is in Gemini and, and there's history behind that as well. But anyway, um, yeah, and it's just dawning on me. I didn't even think about that one. Wow. Bizarre, but not really. It makes a hell of a lot of sense now, even more. So Nessa, 
follow Nessa if you like. Um, if you if you get software from me or your chart from me, it'll have Nessa on it. And I'm saying Nessa, but it's pr it's pronounced Nessus. So it's N E S S U S. Oh shit. Okay. Oh, no wonder. Oh, this is kind of in a moment here for me because I just connected the dots of an event of mine probably from just so, so long ago. And uh, I actually had a communication about it with somebody today. Um, but this was an event from childhood. And I did not realize, I freaking did not realize my Nessa is way the hell out of bounds. Holy shit. It's at 3143. My nest is really out of bounds. That makes sense to me in the current stuff. And I guess in the past shit too. So let's read Nessa. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Nessa, a centaur who sought revenge on Hercules. Yeah, I know this story. Okay. Having to face deep pain and make choices as a result of or while under the influence of this pain, what one thinks is the monster within and what one does because of it. Okay, so I'm having a revelation at this moment. Wow. Wow. Yeah, the revelation is deep. And um, yeah, I, I can't get into it with and not, and not talk for more than a few minutes. It's really involved. And um, I've been having some very deep involved conversations with people and their charts and events connected to those, you know, like real life events connected to the planets or the asteroids or whatever in their life. Right. But, but there's things there. Right. And so understanding just the the depth and sometimes the pain and vulnerabilities and sometimes the tragic shit involved and um yeah I, it, it has to be saved for another time and so if anybody's up for something like that i'm i'm really considering doing like coordinating something with the zoom so that because i don't want it to be on 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 the youtube platform I don't want it to be on a live that anybody could. No, this is deep shit. This is shit that you just don't, you know, this is deep stuff. So, so if anybody's up for that, let me know. Cause I can coordinate it and, and, and find out what works for you guys as far as when would be a good time. Cause I, I really feel like, um, yeah, this is a thing that needs to be done. It's part of processing and understanding and then healing. Yeah. Okay. So where are we? So you understand Nessa now, right? It's it's kind of like yuck. Yeah, it's kind of like yuck. Kind of like yuck. All right, let's move on. We don't need any more yuck for tonight. We're good. We're having a great day. We got Neptune. And that pretty much looks the way Neptune looks. Sometimes you'll see little arrows on the top of these points right here. Little bitty arrows, very small, like you might not even notice them. I'm a detailed geek, especially when it comes to drawings and shit. So, yeah, you'll see like these little points at the top because then it kind of looks like almost like Poseidon's, uh, what is that thing called? That Poseidon, his trident, right? Looks like Poseidon's trident. If you've ever seen his trident, it, it kind of looks, yeah, it's got like those pointy things, you know, on the end. So, Neptune is pretty basic. It's in, it's a, it's a regular thing. You guys are going to see this all the time. This is nothing special. It represents sleep and dream and fantasy and illusions and does represent the subconscious and possibly other lifetimes, possibly soul memory, soul history, uh, can be, you know, uh, healing institutions, hospitals. It can be meditation and prayer and sound and sensitivities high levels of sensitivities. Where is Pisces in your chart? Where's Neptune? And that'll tell you the rest of the story. All right. Next is white moon Lilith. This is not as common. White moon Lilith is not as common. It's got a very beautiful spiritual vibration to white moon Lilith. 
And uh, I will just read what she has here. God, my mind is still like the whole Nessa, Nessus thing for me. I'm like, okay, more things are making sense. More things are much less of a mystery. Okay, so this is called the White Moon or Selena, S-E-L-E-N-A. It is a hypothetical second moon of the planet Earth moving about the Earth in seven years. In mythology, Selena is the goddess of the moon and is often represented as a woman with a crescent moon on her head. The myth talks of her lighting up the night sky as she begins her journey, freshly washed in the Earth's oceans. Some stories state that she comes down to earth again when she sees and falls in love with a beautiful mortal, bearing him 50 children. <laughs> sure. Astrologers vary on their interpretations of Selena. However, it is likely that she represents the point of awareness whereby we understand our role on earth and we start on our soul's journey lighting the way for others. Okay, nice. That was Selena, S-E-L-E-N-A, or White Moon Lilith. Um, okay, good. For, for, for a second, I thought we weren't recording, and I was just ready to scream. <laughs> I was ready to just be like, I'm done. Okay, this is Hercules. Hercules, Hercules, right? Uh, that was for Dennis. <laughs> so that's Hercules. And yeah, Hercules is here in astrology. And yes, Hercules is a myth. Uh, or Heracles, Hercules or Heracles, D a divine hero, demigod, son of Zeus and a mortal and a mortal mother, best known for the story of the 12 labors of Hercules, became a full god upon his death struggling with something seemingly insurmountable. It's an inner battle to keep passions and temper in control, learning to become aware of one's own strengths. And I will add, it's not just to become aware of your own strength. I know that it's said uh, the battle to keep passions and temper in control, but it is also the battle to be able to control your own strengths. I know it was kind of written in two separate sentences, but it is absolutely about that. And so that's Hercules. Where is that in your chart? Next, we have Chiron. You heard me talk about Chiron already, the wounded healer. There it is, Chiron in green, right? It's got a K and then it's got a circle at the bottom. Some say it almost looks like a key, right? Like there's this circle and it kind of looks like a key. So it's not really a K because when you think about it, Chiron is spelled C-H-I-R-O-N. So just understand that's a key there. That's not the letter K. Ah, we got a kitty. Hold on. Okay, Taff. Oh, it's Zoe. Come on. Holy crap. We're going to get an appearance by Zoe. Now, you know the humans. The other humans aren't home because... Come on. Oh, okay. So she's had, she, she did her walk around. Oh, she wants my lap. Come on. The humans aren't here. Yeah, it's okay. You're going to make an appearance. You're going to make an appearance. Okay. Can you turn around though? Can you put your paws up on that desk for me? Cause that works well. I can't, I can't sit the way that I used to. Okay, honey. I can't even reach the board, the dashboard or the, the laptop. Yeah, I know you just, oh, your ears are freezing. What happened? What happened to your ears? You had your head in the window, huh? You had your head in the window? Say, yes, I did. Where's your sister at? Yes, this is the first night that their their mom and dad aren't home. So this one's decided, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to make my space right here with G tonight. Uh, Taffy's normally in here, but this is Zoe. I don't know if many of you have ever met Zoe. She is a beautiful Russian blue. She was found on the streets. She was found on the streets and then, yeah, put in the pound and 
um, she was found on the streets and they had, she had already been declawed right when they found her. Uh, she's so super beautiful. And so whoever had her, she probably escaped because she's just, you know, she just kind of almost looks like, <laughs> I don't know, princess. We call her, well, I call her princess, huh? And she's not happy because she can't get comfy and she knows I'm not comfy either. And so we're trying to figure this out. It would be great if you could just sit on the table, but this is a lap cat, unlike Taffy. Zoe is a real lap cat. Thing is, Zoe, okay, how about I just go like this? <laughs> I'll just go like this. Uh, so yeah, Chiron and the key. So the thing with Chiron, it's about your deepest, they say it's your deepest emotional womb. Obviously, for any of you who have uh, Scorpio energy, right? If you've had a lot of tragic stuff going down in your life, you can argue this, this Chiron thing, that it's your deepest emotional wound. I'm sorry, emotional and physical, emotional and physical for Chiron. Uh, but to me, if you've had an emotional wound, you absolutely now have an, uh, or I'm sorry, if you've had a physical wound, you absolutely have an emotional wound. You know, if there was some tragic shit that occurred, uh, it leaves scars. It leaves energetic scars. It just does. So Chiron, the wounded healer, represents our emotional and physical wounds. It reveals a part of us that is hurt, small, and vulnerable. Sounds a lot like Scorpio, right? We are encouraged to heal our wounds. She's like looking like, why the hell aren't you petting me? We are encouraged to heal our wounds and then look beyond personal realms to see the suffering of others and to become teachers and healers. You see how the similarities are between Chiron and Scorpio energy? Super similar, but after all said and done, you know, yeah, Scorpio, great healers of the Zodiac, just, just, just phenomenal. And Chiron energy, I'm sure can, um, do wonders. I, I don't doubt that. Um, but once the thing with the Chiron and the key, what's the purpose of the key? The key is understanding what your wounds were recognizing them, acknowledging them, processing and working through that. And then getting beyond the stage where, where, cause some of the wounds, you can't talk about the stuff depending upon what kind of things happen to you. You can't even, you can't, you know, you can't rationally talk about it. But then when you get to that stage where you can talk about it and it doesn't, it doesn't hold that power on you anymore, where it's just got you, then that story, that experience, others can hear it and be inspired, be inspired and be like, damn, that person did it. Like they lived through that. And here they are talking about it. Like that tells me I can make it, you know, even though it might seem impossible right now and, and really difficult and, and far from fun and painful, but humans are extremely resilient. Um, and so, yeah. All righty. So let's get off of Chiron. Zoe is slowing me down here. Uh, there you go. That's Vulcan. That's a Vulcan. It's got a circle uh, with the, I'm sorry. That's, I lied. That's Eris. <laughs> I'm looking at that and like, stop lying. This is Eris. Eris is a female warrior. Female warrior. Yeah, Zoe, I really can't sit that way. The nerd, yeah, that isn't going to work for me, honey. You can stay in here. You can stay in here. I, I have to change the position. Okay, she said, screw you. Yeah, that one does not have patience. She will not work with you. She's like, my way or the highway. Okay. <laughs> That's why you never see her ass. <laughs> All right. So, Eris, I'm just going to read this off for I feel like I'm dragging on. Um, come on, pop up. Here we go. Eris is named after the goddess of strife and discord. She describes adversity and issues of quarrels, rivals, revenge, and jealousy. On the other hand, the more positive qualities of this energy are resourcefulness and the desire to work towards self-improvement. You got it? So yeah, the story of Eris, this is a, do a dwarf planet, um, an outer planetary entity. 
And Eris takes about 560 years to complete one orbit around the sun. Most people alive today have Eris in either Pisces or Aries. <clears throat> so the thing with Eris, female energy, and when we when we see what's been going on like since 2020, and like the revolution, revolution energy, a lot of people revolting and being angry and protesting and, you know, doing worse things. A lot of it's attributed to Eris because especially when the pandemic occurred, Eris was at that degree, 22, 23 degrees, an exact square with Saturn and Pluto and Jupiter when they were all in Capricorn in 2020. You know, we had the great conjunction. We have sat, we had Saturn and Jupiter together, which meant mega rules, right? Lockdowns, right? And uh, Eris was squaring that. And so Eris and Aries was all about, hey, what the hell? You can't lock me down. Like, what are these rules? God damn it. You mean I got to wear a mask? Are you crazy? And so Eris was, was that, right? Eris was, was a big part of that. Just to give you an idea, an example. Okay, Vertex, let's move on. Let's go to Vertex. Vertex is just a VX in this software, okay? It's just a VX. And there is an anti-Vertex in your chart. It's going to be the same exact degrees as your Vertex, same exact in the opposite sign, the opposition, okay? So the Vertex definition, it is a point. Okay, um, I'm sorry. There's like a lot of things here. It's reading what sign it's in. Basically, it comes down to it represents the opening and closing of doors in our lives. It is where people arrive and leave and where events start and finish. So the vertex point can be tricky, especially, you know, when we're when we're looking at astrology in terms of, okay, I have this planet here. How does this show up in my life? How do I express this energy? Well, how does that work with a vertex thing then? Because Vertex isn't you. It represents people who come into your life and events that come into your life, the coming and going of those people. Um, the only thing I can think of that makes sense is the basic law, one of the natural laws. I'll say that. One of the natural laws, which is um, like attracts like which is the energy that I hold within me is the energy. It's a boomerang. It's the energy that I attract to me. And so your vertex point technically then is you and you attract those type of people. So you would then just look up at the sign that it's in to add clarity. Cause we had a question the other day about that. And I just thought this is a great time to answer that question. Jupiter, Jupiter, Jupiter. I don't think I've ever seen Jupiter look any other way, but that's Jupiter, that number four, right? And Jupiter is the greater benefic. It expands, it's generous, it's confident, it's got that world traveler, world knowledge, it's, 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 it can see into the future even, it's prophetic, maybe even connected to prophecy and, and um, just getting messages from the divine. It is higher education and going on that journey, Jupiter, traveling, traveling, airplanes, Jupiter. I got something in my eye. It's driving me crazy. There's the North Node. We talked about the South Node, and here's the North Node, right? The closed end of the ring, the North Node. And so that's what you're working towards because the South Node was like your superpower, the thing you already perfected. The North Node is asking you to work on this because the opposite of this is where your greatest strength was, and this is the opposite of that, all right? And once you, once you, do, once you figure that out and you work on it, you, 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 you get balance. You get a beautiful balance and, the, and a new gift because this holds the potentials for like undiscovered superpowers, undiscovered superpowers, the North Node. It's all about your future and what is yet to come. Mercury, Mercury, Mercury. We all know Mercury, right? Looks uh, like a little Venus, but with the, the little antennas or, or the little bullhorns on the top because it's about information. So we'll just stick with antennas. The fan is going and my eyes are just getting so dried out. So Mercury is information and communication. It's the scribe. It's the news. It's social media. And this is why 
this is why people get their freaking news on social media, right? It's like all just become kind of, yeah, like who the hell watches TV anymore? And everyone's got their phones and their devices and the social sites that they're on and that they talk with other people. So they don't have to disconnect from the conversations with people. They can consume information and news or whatever and exchange information all in one spot. Freaking Mercury. Very fast, but can be the trickster. And that is why all this crap we went through with this pandemic and all the information and facts and misinformation and manipulated facts and, and, and all that. And, and yeah, just a whole hot mess of learning people learning how to use the internet in a way where, you know, whether you are looking at credible news sources, credible, you follow. Okay. So let's move on. <laughs> um, this is Australia. I haven't talked about Australia in a long time, but the meaning for Australia, it kind of boils down to stick to It is where in your chart, in your life, you may not see when something is over. Think of, I don't want to say the pit bull. Uh, the dog is such a bad rap, but you know, when it's in the midst of a dog fight, give me another example. I, yeah, I love animals and I hate using this for the pit bull, but they get a taste of that blood, right? And they tend to not let go then. And so I kind of, I kind of use that analogy for Australia because it gets a taste of something or someone or, or whatever. And I, this thing that's, that's, it just gets in the mode and it's very fixed. It's a very fixed energy. And once it's in it, it doesn't want to change. It kind of stays in it. So I call it stick to which at certain times having stick to can be very beneficial, right? When times are tough and when it's like the going gets, you know, when it's getting rough and it's like, oh my God, I don't know how I can keep going on. Australia will help you through that because Australia can, can stick with it. Okay. The difference is recognizing when something's done and over. And we don't see that it's done and over because maybe someone didn't tell us it was done and over. Like those conversations weren't really had. And yet they're like, well, God, what don't they get the picture? Right. And so sometimes our Australia prevents us from getting the picture of seeing when something is just done and over. And this is Vesta. This Vesta, that's a flame. And so when you, wherever you have Vesta in your chart, this is where you carry your flame for you, for you. It is that thing you do where you shine, where there's something unique about you, but it's you carrying your own flame. It's like you cherishing you and seeing a value in yourself. Obviously the sign that it's in the house that it's in will manipulate that meaning. But at the end of the day, it's your job to make sure you keep your flame lit. That's Vesta. It's, it's this beautiful uh, goddess energy, of course. Let me see if I can get some information to come up here. On here, it says Vesta represents the issues of commitment. This includes commitment to work and for within relationships. Uh, where do your commitments lie and where are you focusing your energies? Interesting. Um, this software... And the definition for Vesta is very different from what I understood Vesta to be before I started using the software. But I just wanted to share both perspectives for, with you because I think, well, it's important. It's for you to decide what makes sense for you in your life and your chart. And um, I would recommend to do that always in astrology just because here's the thing. And this is great because we're on Uranus and this is perfect. So I'm going to unfortunately, but yeah, I'm going to spend a little bit of time with this. Let me see how long I've been recording for. Freaking streamer doesn't tell me how long my videos are going for anymore. I don't understand. I used to have a clock up there that would tell me how long I've been recording. Hold on a minute. Maybe I need to do something like this. Okay, great. I see it. All right. Well, then maybe I'll just have to separate this into another video. But in the meantime, Uranus energy is all about unconventional. It says, I'm not doing it that way because 
it's always been that way. That's Uranus. Now, it is a mixed bag. I will I will recognize that and, and be like, you're right. If it seems confusing, I was just reading a comment before I started recording this of someone mentioning, uh, you know, I find Uranus to be confusing. And it is because one minute I can tell you that this is an authority figure in your life, somebody who's older than you, likely masculine, father figure, an authority figure, possibly your boss. And at the same token, I can also say, but this can be a youngster in your life. This can be somebody younger than you. So how is that possible? How can it be someone older than me and someone younger than me? It's not a peer. It's somebody who's not the same age as you. It's different. You see now? It's different. That's the thing. That's the main thing. It's different. It's not, it's, you know, your friends, your typical friends, people you call your friends are probably within the same age range as you, right? Not everybody. Some people get along better with older people and with younger people. Matter of fact, I was just having a conversation with somebody about that a couple of weeks ago. And they were saying, yeah, you know, the people that I hang out with or that I consider friends, they're actually older than me or younger than me. And I think this person had, an, I could be wrong. And that's all right. I think they might have had an Aquarius moon. And they were explaining that, yes, their friends are either older than them or younger than them. No, I don't think it was an Aquarius moon. Anyway, so, but it was something that had to do with Aquarius. It had to do with Uranus. It had to do with your Aquarius because Uranus rules Aquarius. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that this energy being different and being the unconventional, it goes against the grain. Think of a piece of wood and the way you can see the grain going, right? Or food, like a piece of meat. And they tell you to cut against the grain. Well, that's Uranus coming and cutting against the grain, right? It, it's the one that's going to be outside of the square, outside of the circle, the one who's coming in and they got the figure eight and they're like, this is my shape. And it's just like, okay, you couldn't just do a square or a circle. You had to do a freaking figure eight. You had to do, you had to just come up with something crazy. Yeah, that's Uranus. It is your independence, but not only independence, more importantly, it's your uniqueness, your originality. It is very creative thinking. It's the inventor. So it's science. It's medicine. It is all those unbelievable folks from the past who invented amazing things. And they don't have to be people from the past, like whoever created the freaking web, right? That's Uranus. Absolutely. That completely changed humanity and it helped humanity progress. <laughs> right. I kind of chuckle at that because we're seeing some of the downsides, but that's with any new thing. That is just how it works. You don't just all of a sudden create this new thing and implement it and then and, and, and immerse society into a society. And then society just uses it. And it's like, bam, it's perfect. There's no, there's no downfalls. There's no side effects. There's no, there's nothing negative. That's so unrealistic. That's not reality at all. There takes a lot of time to, to acclimate to things, regardless of what the new thing is or the changes are, we have to acclimate to them. And there's always going to be people who abuse whatever the hell this new or old thing is. That is human nature. So, you know, yeah, just back up a little bit when we, when we keep complaining about life and how the world sucks and all that. So our Uranus, very different. It's how you are standing out from the crowd, your friends, but how you stand out from the crowd of your friends, what makes you unique. Okay. Freedom and independence. Yeah. These are the flags. Okay. We got a kitty cat. We'll see who this is. Elgo, another fixed star, right? Cause you see the star there. You're more than welcome to come up. I just can't you can come up on the desk. I can't, I can't go backwards for you, honey. It's not going to work. Elgo. Um, this one is important, right? It's, it's a powerful point in a person's chart. And if you read on Elgo, which I am about to do, this is a double star system with phases of greater and lesser brightness. 
in old beliefs, it was held to be dangerous and difficult when it was dark, when the star was dim. In modern times, it's connected to bringing the subconscious to light, what was in the hidden out into the light. Sub oh, it's taffy. Oh, okay, mama. Okay. Yeah, see, I could have moved back for her because she would then jump up onto the desk. She knows. She knows the drill. But Zoe wants to be on the lap 24-7. And um, I'm the only human home. So, yeah, nobody's happy right now, huh? You're not happy with all that, huh? It's okay. Okay, so uh, that's Elgo. So it's powerful. Find out where it is in your chart. Okay, Taff, get yourself comfortable. Is there not enough room? Oh, you know what? I do have the desk, the laptop a little closer. Let me see if I can push some things over. How's that? Is that better? Okay, I need to have, uh, I need to be in here. All right. Okay, we're on to Sedna. I recently did a video on Sedna. Matter of fact, that symbol is on the cover. I think I put it on my hand because my hand just happened to be up in the video. And I'm like, oh, it's a white spot. We can put Sedna right there. And I did. Um, but yeah, go watch that video. It's really interesting. This energy has a lot of uh, Scorpio qualities in terms of the tragedy and the, and, and the vulnerabilities and the pain. Uh, but this is definitely female ener or feminine energy different than Scorpio because Dor Scorpio is masculine energy, right? So Sedna, Inuit goddess, and t talks, her myth is, is, the, is betrayal and just, yeah, betrayal and hurt and isolation and abandonment. And um, yeah, you could say rape or incest. I have no idea. One or the other, maybe all, who the hell knows? All I know is it's another female being uh, treated like, yeah, like they have no value. So Sedna, that's Sedna. Um, let's move on. Here we go. Finally, Vulcan. Oh, look at that. Vulcan was the last one. And that makes sense because you're always going to see this Vulcan right near the sun. It's that's typically where you're going to see this Vulcan. Uh, that's and remember the other one was called Vulcanus. This is Vulcan, so it's right by the sun, which is normal. It always travels near the sun, and you see, it's like it's an arrow, right? It's an arrow. It's an arrow just pointing straight downwards. And remember, it's the hammer and the anvil. You know, you got a hammer. And there's the anvil, the thing that you lay the the thing that you're bending and molding on top of, but it's fire. So I think of a blacksmith. I think of a welder, somebody who was working with fire and shaping and molding and changing the form of a very hard material. So these are those iron smiths. These are these people who who know how to work with heat and pressure. And they can create or destroy because you pick up something, it's in one particular shape, you add fire and the heat to it, and you destroy the, the present shape. And then from there, you can use the hammer and shape it and mold it to however you want. So that's the Vulcan energy, the power to create or destroy. Uh, let me read what it says here in Esoteric Astrology. Oh, my God. Uh, it's um, more commonly used in the field of esoteric astrology. It has yet to be officially discovered, and therefore its position is still open to speculation. Fair enough. Um, they believe that Vulcan is a powerful planet and will be discovered only when humanity is ready to use its tremendous power. It presents the power to smash or break down crystallized matter and form. Okay, now we got two kitties. Come on up here. You can come on up. It's, hey, 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 it's your sister. Relax. It's, you don't have to leave. Hey, it's okay. She just doesn't want to be alone. She just doesn't want to be, she just doesn't want to be alone. Taff, she's not going to do anything. Taff gets really possessive. Come on, see? Now she's going to leave. See, she left, Taff. She just doesn't want to be alone. There's nobody else home. She's more, that's why the door's open. You guys should be able to be in here, right? Okay, let me get this done. 
<laughs> so I can go. So uh, what was I saying? Right. To smash or break down crystallized matter and form and is to pave the way for the fusion of new forms. Its speculative position shows us where we need to break down the old in order to forge the new. Okay. So that's Vulcan. And with that, if I go back down on the chart now, believe it or not, we just went through in two videos. Yeah, I know it was pretty lengthy because this is a video that's an hour long now. I'm at 55 minutes. There was a lot to go through on this part of the chart, though. Um, this part of the video went through Vulcan and all these planets. Like, it was a lot, right? It was all of this. So I hope it helps. Let me know what else. If there's another video, like if you have specific questions about something, if you don't have your chart, if you don't know, if you need to know, if you don't know and you want to know, if, if you, if you, whatever it is that you need, comment below. I can help you out. That's the, that's the passion of the channel. I want, I want you to be able to put your life in your hands. And in my mind, when we have our charts and we're looking at them, we're holding our life in our head. And that is your, that is your, your, your energetic frequency grid is what I call it because it's the moment of your birth and it's who you are and it's where everything was when you were born. And so it, it tells a story and yeah, check it out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Taffy and Zoe say good night. Bye-bye.